It's been about a week since Zenless Zone Zero dropped, and there's definitely been a lot of chatter surrounding it. For the haters, ZZZ's easy difficulty and exploration puzzles leave a lot to be desired. For the stands, though, it's the hat trick alongside of Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail that cements Hoyoverse as the undisputed king in the gacha gaming space. That latter group, by the way, they're not entirely wrong either, and it's pretty easy to see why. Every month in the Sensor Tower monetary rankings, Hoyo games are at the top, nearly uncontested. Why would Zenless Zone Zero be any different? Notice though that I said nearly uncontested, and that's because recently a major competitor stepped up to the plate. That competitor being Kuro Games with the release of Wuthering Waves back in late May. Wuthering Waves, or WUA for short, is an action RPG complete with a sprawling open world sandbox. It mirrors many of the aspects that players loved about Genshin Impact and propelled Hoyoverse being a household name back in 2020. Wuwa goes above and beyond that though. It has extremely polished and deep combat, as well as features that many players were clamoring for back in Genshin Impact, such as having an actual endgame to test their skills. Despite Wuthering Waves' rocky start, which I covered in my first impressions here, the revenue doesn't lie. Making reportedly over 100 million US dollars in the first month alone, Wuthering Waves is undoubtedly the first real competitor to Hoyoverse games. Now, just six weeks after Wuwa's release, Hoyoverse will attempt to clap back with their first action game in over four years. This is Zenless Zone Zero. Zenless Zone Zero puts you in the shoes of the brother-sister duo, Wise and Bell, who are collectively known together as Faithen. Faithen are a proxy, essentially a guide to help you navigate hollows, giant spheres that appear around the world, and are filled with ethereals, which are your standard JRPG monsters. Various agents hire proxies to help them fulfill jobs and tasks inside of the hollows, such as gathering resources or perhaps a misplaced item. It's best to think of Faithen like an operator and the agents that you'll be playing as like Neo and Trinity from The Matrix. Agents go into the hollows, aka The Matrix, Faithen gets them the hell out of there once the job is done. It's a wizard! Get me the hell out of here! It's a really simple concept, but honestly, it works super well in this game. So many gacha games nowadays basically have you playing something akin to the chosen one. You know, the godlike being who is the only one who could save the world, or the entire fate of the universe rests in their hands, or whatever have you. That's not really the case here in Zenless Zone Zero. Everything feels much more intimate, lower stakes if you will. Almost everyone feels like they're scrapping for odd jobs, trying to make ends meet for them and theirs. This is further driven home by the fact that Wise and Bell run a video rental store as a front to cover for their illegal proxy activities. They're constantly talking about their monthly budget, how to keep their shelves stocked with VHS tapes to get more traffic in the store, etc, etc. The fact that this replaces the game's dispatch system, by the way, uh, something that's normally very bland in these kinds of games, I think is a pretty genius move. The game got me to care about the mundane with its great premise and its amazing sense of style. Speaking of style, let's talk about presentation. <laughs> So what is Zenless Zone Zero's strongest feature? Well, it's the presentation and the artistic direction. If the retro video store didn't tip you off, this game is a huge love letter to the late 90s and early 2000s, to those diehard nerds like me that lived through that era, to the boomers that remember browsing their local blockbuster looking to rent something like Jet Set Radio, to the kids who would spend all day jamming quarter after quarter at arcades to prove they were the best at a game of Marvel vs. Capcom. It's no wonder that this game is collabing with Capcom and Street Fighter VI as I'm recording this. Those little nods and throwbacks are all right there in this game's presentation. It's in the music, the vibrant comic book panels that tell the game's narrative, Nicole's devilish side eye at the start of each level, all the little anime easter eggs, the giant wipeout at the end of every stage to let you know a job's been well done. 10 out of 10, Hoyoverse nailed the assignment. 
The menus in ZZZ also ooze a ton of substance, charm, and style, but not everything is perfect. It's not readily apparent what class certain agents are in your roster or how you're even supposed to find this information. You're basically just relying on this little icon as far as I can tell. The animations on the character models are honestly pretty damn top tier, but I can't help but feel like there's something missing at the same time. Perhaps they would have been doing a little bit better here, I feel like, with a black outline on the character models. Something that would kind of make them pop just a little bit more. These are small gripes though, to be sure. The sound design though in this game is top notch, particularly in regards to sound effects. These are some of the crunchiest hits and slams I've heard in a game in a while, and they are so damn satisfying to experience every single time. The OST also straight up feels like it belongs in a game like Jet Set Radio and fits the mood of this game to a T. That said, I don't think it quite lives up to the soundtrack from Sega's classic graffiti filled platform, nor do I think it's as good as recent gacha powerhouses like Arknights or Goddess of Victory Nikkei. Those are still the top two games in my opinion when it comes to gacha game soundtracks. If I have one major gripe about the non-gameplay side of ZZZ, it's the game's performance issues. I'm playing this game on an Intel i9 processor with a GTX 3090, and I was still experiencing stuttering and slowdown in non-combat zones of the game. That really shouldn't be happening for a game of this size, or at least that's what I'd like to say because for some reason Zenless Zone Zero clocks in at a whopping 55 plus gigabytes. That's larger than Honkai Star Rail is currently with all of its current patches. It's also basically as large or slightly larger than Resident Evil 4 Remake, a game that has significantly more graphical oomph. Like, what the hell are we even doing here with our optimization, Hoyoverse? While I could go on and on and on about the presentation, I'm sure all of you here just want to know how does it actually play and is the game worth your time? Zenless Zone Zero's gameplay loop comes in two flavors, combat and exploration. Combat is as it sounds. You play as the various agents you've unlocked to fight against hordes of ethereals inside of the game's various hollows to complete your missions. Your team can consist of up to three characters at a time, and each character's arsenal consists of a basic attack, a unique skill, an ultimate attack, and the ability to dodge. You also have the ability to tag out the active character for another one in your party at any time. Swapping allies in ZZZ is incredibly important, and the game is constantly trying to get you to do so. The ability to parry enemy attacks, aka perfect assist, is done by switching to an ally to block for you at the right time. Simply swap to a teammate when you see the enemy initiate an orange flash attack, and the game does the rest. In some cases, it will even block multiple hits for you. For other types of flashes, you won't be able to parry them and instead must dodge the old-fashioned way. Allies can also be tagged in during chain attacks, which are initiated by breaking an enemy's guard. You can then string together one attack from each of your allies, followed by a bang boo assist, which is unlocked later on in the game. The system is incredibly easy to pick up and will feel very accessible to even newer players of the action combat genre. That said, it isn't without its faults. The parry window in Zenless Zone Zero is incredibly generous in almost every fight that I've encountered in my 25 plus hours with the game. It honestly feels kind of like the hold system in a dead or alive game, more so than like a perfect parry in something like, say, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. Even playing the game on challenge mode, which is the harder difficulty, I never really broke a sweat on any of this game's fights. This isn't to say that the game isn't going to get hard later on, but if you're a fan of playing things on Dante Must Die difficulty, you're going to feel this game lacking in that regard. If you came from Wuthering Waves, it's almost immediately obvious that while this game is fun, it's significantly more shallow in the skill expression department. There are a few animation cancels here and there to eke out a little bit more damage, but nothing on the level that you can do in Wuwa. The game is also painfully slow, 
at onboarding you with its systems, not allowing you to fully gain access to most of your tools and features until about 10 plus hours in. The other major detractor I suspect people will hate is the other half of the gameplay loop that we talked about, exploration. Remember how we said Phaethon was a proxy? Well, in exploration game mode, you're gonna take a bird's eye view of the hollow and view it through CRT TVs. This gameplay mode is a lot of menuing and also a lot of puzzle solving. It also isn't very difficult or, let's be honest, interesting until later puzzle stages. In the first 10 hours or so of ZZZ, you'll spend roughly about a third of your time watching story cutscenes, a third of your time doing these basic exploration puzzles, and a third of your time doing actual fighting. I suspect many action-oriented gamers will check out of ZZZ because of how little the combat sandbox gets to be explored in its opening hours. Me personally, I didn't really mind this aspect of the game, and I feel it further lends itself to the identity of what Hoyoverse is going for with this game. I just wish the more interesting aspects of it were explored up front rather than what you get nearly 30 hours in. Lastly, let's talk about the game's gotcha systems because, well, this is a gotcha game. If you've played Hoyo games before, you pretty much know the drill here. Game gives you currency, you spend currency to roll for new characters, aka agents, or new weapons, aka W engines. It takes about 90 pulls to guarantee a 5 star unless you get lucky, and even then there's a 50-50 chance that you might not get the rated up character. W engines take less in this game with only 80 pulls needed, but you're still subject to a 25% chance that the 5 star rarity isn't the one that you want. This is honestly pretty shocking to see considering Wuthering Waves has a 100% chance to get the weapon that you are looking for in its gotcha systems. ZZZ also features a third type of gotcha called the Bangboo gotcha where you can get various Bangboos to help you out in combat and further expand upon team building. The thing is, the only way to roll this gotcha is with Bupons, which are only obtainable through playing the game. You can't buy these by any means which means that there is definitely a luck element to getting what you need early on. Not having the right Bang Boo hasn't really detracted too much from my enjoyment of the game, but I will say it's something that could annoy some players. If you were fine with how Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail doled out rewards in the past, I don't really think that this game's freebies will annoy you too much. But compared to Wuthering Waves, the competitor in this space, They've given out enough currency and selectors to basically get everyone started with three five stars from the get-go. Zenla Zone Zero really only guarantees you one five-star agent at the start, and that's aided largely by the freebies given out during the game's first month release window. It's kind of astonishing that with a major competitor right on their heels that they decided that they would just stick with their tried and true method rather than being a bit more generous. At the end of the day, Zenless Zone Zero is another strong start to a game for Hoyaverse. Its cast of characters and presentation are the strongest I've seen at launch for a gacha game pretty much forever, and the story has been an incredibly enjoyable experience thus far. Combat is fast, fluid, and fun, although it definitely can feel a bit repetitive and easy at times. The TV exploration is certainly going to have as many fans as it does detractors. The most interesting thing though I think about Zenless Zone Zero right now is how it is the total opposite of Wuthering Waves. It managed to stick the presentation and storytelling where Kuro Games basically floundered in its opening acts. Wuthering Waves however managed to deliver a much better foundation for combat and is significantly more generous with its gacha systems. For veterans of the genre who have the patience to see Kuro Games roadmap through, I do think that Wuthering Waves is the game that has the higher potential. For the average player though, I do think Zenless Zone Zero is the safer bet. Hoyo has a pretty strong track record at this point and what's on display here is more than enough to keep you invested for at least 30 to 40 hours in the launch window. Who knows, maybe my complaints will be non-existent a few months from now as live service games like these are ever changing. Right now though, I'm feeling a strong 8 out of 10 from Zenless Zone Zero during its launch window. And now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on ZZZ? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you want to see more ZZZ content here on the channel, let me know that down there as well. Thanks for watching, and as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later.